Hey folks, you like axes, right? They're pretty metal. I'm going to review this Viking axe, and that may give you a hint as to which the sponsor for this video is. That's right, it's Vikings War of Clans again. Vikings. You know, my little sarcastic jabs here and there aside, I do appreciate all the support they've been giving the channel. And this game is everywhere these days. It keeps raiding all the videos. And uh, they're counting 20 million players now, which is uh, 18 times the population size of all of Scandinavia around the year 1000, which was estimated at 1.1 million. That's pretty crazy. So it seems people are enjoying the nice 3D graphics and classic strategy gameplay with RPG elements mixed in, and of course the large online battles too. So if you check out the link in the description down below, you can get a sign up bonus of 200 gold and a protection shield. Just so you know, Odin scoffs at protection. And horned helmets too. But that's okay, real Vikings used shields too. Not horns though, that was the Celts. All right, so this is the Nordland Axe by Arms and Armor, or rather Nurland, which is a county in northern Norway where the original was found. I haven't been able to find pictures of the original axe head, but it's a Pedersen Type C, and there are a number of similar ones. Uh, these are also called Shegux, which is a beard axe, and uh, these could be either a tool or a weapon. They are not designed as a dedicated weapon, like a Dane axe, for example, which has a very thin blade that is not suitable for, you know, felling trees, chopping wood, or carving. Whereas a somewhat thicker head like this can be used for that, but it can also be used as a weapon. So if you know, they didn't have anything else, they would grab one of these and, and go into battle with that if they couldn't afford a sword, for instance. And by the way, if you're confused by the tomahawk style hafting here, that is actually historical. It was one of the two main methods that were used. So yeah, there are some original finds where they, the, the wooden haft is preserved and you can see that they were mounted that way. But uh, some of them were also mounted with the wedge where you know, everything is flush. So yeah, it's just different construction methods. Uh, this one here has black paint on it, which personally I have to say bothers me. A black paint, to my knowledge, is not historical for that time period at all. And uh, you can get a dark finish if you just leave it the way it is after forging and tempering and then only grind the edge, which looks nicer. But it seems that this head is actually cast. It's cast 50, no, 6150 steel. Uh, so it's not forged. And uh, that's apparently done to reduce the costs. That was Arms and Armors main intention here, main focus, to keep this as affordable as possible. It's being offered for 82 US dollars. And if you think $82 is not terribly cheap for an axe, then don't forget that these are made in the US. You know, of course it can't compete with the price of an axe made in China or India or El Salvador in case of Condor. Uh, but uh, yeah, you have to take that into account. I said, personally, I do not like the paint. They did that to, for one, to protect the, the steel and also to make it look better, supposedly. Like the, the cast finish isn't too great on the, the other version that's also available, which is not painted. Um, it also looks a little weird, at least to me. It might just be a personal opinion thing. But uh, yeah, some... Other than that, how is this? I've owned this for a long time. I, I've actually recorded some test footage in 2014, and I think I may have even gotten this in 2013, or maybe even before, I, I don't quite remember. So I've had this for quite a while. For some reason, I've never gotten around to making a review until now. Either way, so it's a nice overall shape. You know, the beard axe is quite an attractive shape, in my opinion, and uh, it is, you know, pretty well done. Overall, as I said, it is cast, so it's got pros and cons. As far as durability and performance are concerned, I, I was a little skeptical as far as cast compared to forge is concerned, but if it's well tempered, apparently there is really no big difference from what I've read. 
and the, the wooden handle is really nicely shaped. Got to say that. So it tapers down here and then it swells at the end to you know, make sure the, the hand doesn't slide off as easily. So you can choke down all the way and it's still secure in the hand. Now there's a limit to how wide it can get here because it has to fit through the eye of the axe. That's how it's mounted. And um, so when it came, it was a little bit loose. So I had to, to tap this a bit to seat it more firmly. And if it ever loosens up, you can just do that pretty easily. You just tap it on a, a hard surface and you can seat it better that way. When you've got wood shavings like you see here, then that's generally a good fit. So there are some pros and cons compared to the, the wedge mounting method. Uh, with a wedge, you don't have to worry about it loosening and, and sliding down, which can happen with this. Uh, but you know, if you make sure that it's properly seated, it's not really an issue. But this, of course, has the advantage that you can take it off. You, know, you just, if you want to get the the head off, you just tap it on the other end, and you should be able to remove it. So that's that makes it pretty easy to replace the handle or take it off for maintenance and, and things like that. So both method, methods have their pros and cons. And uh, yeah, so the shape is really good. You can see that this is kind of a teardrop shape. And they did a good job on shaping this here. They actually rounded off a little more toward the bottom. At the top, you know, when it's very strongly teardrop shaped, the way it is at the top here. I personally don't like that as much. It's not as comfortable in the hand because it kind of digs into the fingers more. But uh, as I said, further down here, it's kind of going more towards oval and uh, it's just a little more round there. It's a pretty thin handle overall. So for someone with large hands, that's not ideal. If you've got medium or small hands, then that's actually quite comfortable. And you can also always wrap it if you want to, so that's not an issue. The handle is hickory, by the way, which is an excellent choice. Now, it's um, not historical. Historically, they would have had ash available, although sometimes they also used other materials like birch wood, for example. But uh, hickory is really tough wood. It definitely works very well. It's quite light for an axe. It's really easy to handle, and you can even do kind of wrist cuts or chops with it, even though, of course, this is really more a weapon for elbow or shoulder power cuts. And uh, so handling is really good. That's, that's something I've always liked about it. Quite nicely designed. And uh, yeah, it is very affordable, you know, considering that it is such a well-shaped reproduction. Not entirely historically, historically accurate, as said, but overall pretty good job. And 82 is, is definitely reasonable for it, in my opinion. Now, the drawbacks. I've already mentioned the paint. I don't have to go into that again. Uh, the other major problem is this may very well be just this one. In fact, I pretty much know that it's this one in particular because a friend of mine also has this axe and it came reasonably sharp. This one had pretty much no edge at all when it came. It was a very steep grind, pretty thick, and it could barely cut at all. Now, I realize that I personally have maybe unreasonably high expectations when it comes to blade sharpness, and I understand that an axe doesn't need to be shaving sharp, even though there are woodworkers who very much like their axes to be shaving sharp for various reasons, but I don't expect that. What I do expect is that it's sharp enough to actually bite into material. And this one barely even did that when I first got it. So it's, I mean, it did chop into wood, but it, it took a lot more effort. And sometimes it actually bounced off because of how dull it was, which is a safety risk, by the way. So that was, it was really bad. And then, so I grounded quite a bit. I, I also thinned it with uh, a belt sander. And so now it's like, it's not a perfect job, but it's definitely, it tapers more now and it cuts a lot better as it is now. The other issue is that the steel isn't terribly durable, I've found. 
Now this could be a tempering issue with just this one or it could be a general problem, I don't know. But either way, it chips very easily. And not just after I sharpened it, you know, that would be a reasonable object objection. Oh, we changed the, the blade geometry. Of course, it gets damaged more easily now if it's, if it's thinner, but it happened before as well. Even when it was that thick and had that steep of a bevel, it still had pretty substan substantial damage. In fact, pretty similar looking to what you see here. So it would get flattened and chipped and it was just, yeah, it didn't hold up very well. I don't know why that is, if that's a general problem, but it's worth pointing out compared to a lot of other axes that I've tested. This one here just didn't hold up as well. So that's a bit of an issue. I really wish these were not the case, these issues, because otherwise I very much like the design. As I said, I like how it looks, I like how it handles, how the weight, everything is really good. They're just these problems that need to be sorted out. Now, this is also, as I said, I got this quite a while ago, several years ago, so I don't know if they've made changes to the current models, but yeah, either way, so that's been my personal experience. I said the specifications will be down below and also where you can find it so i hope you found that useful and uh, if you like this hoodie by the way and others this one here has a, a rather subtle design here the black on green is not as visible I, I have other versions as well that are a bit more visible there are also other shirts and mugs and stickers etc with various designs i've designed them myself which means they don't look as professional as they could but hey it's more personal right because I've made it myself what do you think they suck your face sucks so yeah that and more is in the video description or more info section or whatever where it says show more click on it do it thanks for watching folks have a good one